Hello, and welcome to this episode of Retro Game Living Room. Today, we're obviously talking about Nintendo Duck Hunt, but it might not be the one that you grow up with, or it might not be the one that your mom or your dad grew up with and then you got to play when you were a kid. Or, you know, maybe if you missed that whole era, the one that you're familiar with from Nintendo Lore, it's not the NES version. This is the original Nintendo Duck Hunt, the original home version, released in 1976, only in Japan. This is a continuation of our series looking at projector-based video games. Previously, we looked at the Coleco Space Blaster, and we already looked at the, the Projector Mega Video Game System. But you have to say it like that when it has a name like that, because that is just too cool. This one's way core. This is probably... This is definitely core than Coleco Space Blaster, which I think is really freaking cool. Because this is Nintendo Duck Hunt and it was released in 1976. What we're going to do is we're going to unbox it. I'm going to show you how it works. And I'm going to let you see it in action. So stick around. First thing we're going to do is open up the box and see what's inside. So we see instructions. These instructions are not written in English. I believe these are written in Portuguese. I got this item from Brazil. So it was exported at least to Brazil at some point. First part of the console we're going to take out here is the gun. And now I've been using this recently. So it does have batteries in it. You lift and pull. You can see that the, the butt of the gun takes not one, but two C batteries. I just want to remind everybody, do not store batteries away in your retro consoles. You will regret it because they will later leak and bleed. Okay, the gun simply slides together and clicks into place. And now we have a pretty cool looking gun. We're going to be taking a closer look at this gun as we take a closer look at the system. I'm going to go ahead and take the console out of the out of its packaging. There's actually some pretty nice packaging here. I do like this packaging. I like, I like the kind of packaging that really holds a console snug in place. So if I need to move or transport a console, I know I can rely on it to keep the console safe. And I do take this around with me. Uh, this year, it was at the Game On Expo in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, so basically the system itself is just a projector. So the light emanates here, reflects through this glass to the mirror, which has motor function. This will move up and down, left and right, to project the ducks on the screen. It has an on and off switch. There are no batteries in this right now. We're going to put batteries in it. The console slash projector itself runs on 4D batteries. I have the switch in the off position. It's really good to make sure you have the switch off in the off position when you're changing the batteries, otherwise it will usually start up on you by accident. Even while it's in the off position, sometimes you can accidentally turn it on while closing the battery cover. Now that we have the batteries locked and loaded, let's grab the gun and take a look and see what the game on this thing looks like. Okay, what we're seeing here is the projector itself in action. I have a projector screen set up, but you can do this on your wall or your curtain. Just, I would recommend a lower light environment to make it easier to shoot the ducks. I really wanted to give you a shot of what the projector looks like when it's in action. So here it is, moving around, projecting the ducks, changing their flight paths. So you can see the light coming out of the bottom and you can see the mirror moving. Let's see if we can take a look 
inside of the projector so you can see what's going on in there. Alright, so we can actually see the duck. It's pretty cool, right? We can actually see that duck before it comes out and gets projected onto the screen. And there it is. There's the duck on the screen. As you can see, the ducks take different paths in order to make them harder to shoot. Now that we've seen how it works, we're going to take a look at the rifle. I want you to be able to get a good close look at the rifle here. So what the rifle does is it's basically like a disposable camera flash charger in it. When it clicks back, and I'm going to see if I can pick this up, probably not with the system running. When it clicks back, what the rifle is like, it's kind of like an old Kodak disposable camera. And then when I release the hammer, I pull back the hammer and I pull the trigger here. There's a flash of light that goes on the screen. That flash of light bounces from the screen into the projector down to the device where it detects a hit. Let's watch it work. Sometimes you gotta be pretty close to it to get it to take a hit when the lights are on. So there was a pretty good solid hit. That one probably was pretty close to being a hit. That was definitely a miss. That's it too. So what's really cool about this is you see the ducks have a falling animation that's different than the flying animation. And the ducks flying patterns are different each shot. What I'm going to do now is get out of the front of the camera, turn the lights out, and try and get some more shots in here. I want you to see what it looks like from the perspective of the shooter. So I'm going to take a shot at one of the ducks with the gun in front of the camera. What you're going to be able to see, what you're going to be able to see, whoa, let's get this figured out here. This is really hard to do. <laughs> what you're going to be able to see is the flash of light from here after I pull the hammer back. It's really, really hard to aim like this. That's why I tell you that. Let's get one though. I'm sure you can see the flash of light by now that I see as the shooter. Oh, come on. I was so close. I was nowhere near it. Yeah, we're killing ducks. Peter would not like this. Nintendo might not release this today, which is a shame because it's very fun. All right, let's try one more. I get one more and then we're gonna be done with the demo here. This is really difficult from this angle. Oh, so close. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you didn't even see it because my hand was in the way. <laughs> You know, when that comes, flies up right. Let's get down a little further here. That's harder. Yeah, I got out of the way for that one. Perfect. Whew. That was a lot of fun hunting ducks today, wasn't it, guys? I'll tell you what. The system is really impressive. This is definitely the best projector console ever made. The gun is really neat on it. It holds well. With the batteries in, it's got a nice weight and feel to it. The projector unit itself is really cool. The way it projects the ducks with two tones, so they have that, you know, that classic NES duck stripe down the middle of them, that classic mallard kind of a look to it. And it has a second animation that it automatically plays 
when it's hit, and this is all mechanical. I mean, obviously there's something in here that tells it how to react, but it's it's a mechanical process that switches the animation. It's not like playing Duck Hunt on the NES where it's all computerized. I'll tell you the very best part about playing Duck Hunt on this is that there's no fucking dog <laughs> to laugh at you and you miss. You miss, you practice. It's also different from Space Blaster, where Space Blaster only gives you, I think, 18 shots. This will to stay on as long as, as long as you're gonna play it. So, so, when I'm in practice, I'm actually pretty good at this game. I get a lot of hits in a row from various distances, uh, from the from the wall or the screen or whatever it happens to be that I'm shooting at. So it's a great console if you're a Nintendo fan and you get a chance to find this. Find this if you know someone in Japan who can maybe find this at a thrift store someplace on the outskirts of a major city. Not in a major city, because stuff's there is really expensive. But if you get in the outskirts in the country, stuff's a lot cheaper out there. Ask them to keep an eye out for, for you for a copy of Dog Hunt. I bought this particular piece, as I mentioned. I imported it from South America. I'll tell you one thing that happened, though, is my gun didn't provide a very good flash at all. So I ended up doing business with a person on eBay in Australia whose name is Zane. His eBay ID is Zane's Japanese Goods. Zane, I saw, was selling a lot of imported and rare Japanese items, particularly pre-NES Nintendo items. So we're talking about TV game colors and a lot of toys and things of that nature. And he happened to be selling a couple duck hunts, and I said, hey man, you know, this is what's wrong with my duck hunt. My flash wasn't really, wasn't really working. He sent me a replacement, which worked better. It gave me about 20 shots before it died. And then I sent that back to him, and he sent me a fully working one. He was able to repair the part I sent him and use it to repair another Duck Hunt game to help keep these classic consoles alive. These are massive pieces of gaming history and Nintendo history. So if you're a Nintendo fan, if you are a Duck Hunt fan, if you're a retro gaming fan... If you're a fan of light gun video games, then if you can get your hands on one of these, add it to your collection. You owe it to yourself. Find one on eBay, find them on Reddit, find them on online gaming forums. If you know someone in Japan or Australia, which has a lot of Japanese gaming stuff due to proximity or even, um, you know, the one that doesn't appear on most on a lot of maps, it's called New Zealand. Yeah, a lot of maps don't have New Zealand. I don't know if you noticed that. Then ask them, see if they can find you one in the wild. Maybe you'll pay a lot less for it than you'd pay from a reseller online or from another collector. And that's all for today and the Nintendo 1976 Duck Hunt Projector Video Game Console. I'll see you next time when I'm going to continue my series on projector-based video game systems. Stick around. Oof, man. Tell you what, I really debated on whether or not to put this in. It has an on and off switch. There are no batteries in this right now. We're going to put batteries in it. I'm going to slide it open so it says push open and up. Shit. What you just saw was a tragedy. And these kind of tragedies happen in retro games. It just turns out that the little part was a little fragile. So what you saw in the rest of the video actually had already been repaired. I repaired it with super glue. Fortunately, I didn't freak out too much. I am a little disappointed in myself, but you know, I was opening it pretty gently. So just a PSA, be extra gentle when you push these in. They are made to spring in so that it can come out. This was made in 1976. That means in 2017, when this is filmed, this is 41 years old right now. So these kind of things happen in retro gaming. I'm not going to beat myself up over it. It was horrifying in the moment it happened. It's all fixed. Again, stick around for the conclusion of my projector video game console series.